Hi, it's Paul Hill from ITFlee.com, and in this lesson, I'm going to help you understand the difference between containers and organizational units, which are commonly referred to as OUs. Now, a container is a structural object that are included by default within Active Directory. The most important difference between OUs, or organizational units, and containers is that you cannot apply group policy objects directly to containers. This will make more sense when you get onto the group policy section of this course, but for now just keep that in mind. It's also not possible to create a container in Active Directory, although you can use ADSI edit to create a container if you have that requirement. Most of the time you will never need to do this, but there will be some scenarios where you're launching a new program or a new management software suite like System Center Configuration Manager or SCCM and it will require you to create containers and you'll use ADSI to do this. Now by default, the containers you will immediately see in Active Directory are computers, foreign security principles, managed service accounts, and users. We can also sort by the type here at the top and group them together. Now the computers container is the default location for new computers who join your domain. So when we join a new workstation in this domain, if we pop in here, it would be listed under this container by default. You can change that with PowerShell, uh, but by default, this is where it's going to land. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that group policy objects that are applied to the itflea.com domain, like the default domain policy, will apply to this computer's container, but you cannot hang specific GPOs to this container. So it's therefore not a good practice to leave computers inside of the computer's container. It's better to build out an OU. You can call it computers or whatever you want to name it, you know, domain computers, managed computers, and apply your GPOs inside of that OU and place your computers inside of that OU. The foreign security principles container holds proxy objects for security principles from other trusted domains. A security principle from another domain could be a user account or a security group that resides in the other domain. If you do not establish a trust between your domain and another, you will not be using this container. An example of when you'd want to use one of these proxy objects would be allowing a user from another domain to also be a part of the administrator's group in your domain. In this case, you would add the proxy objects that represents the user from the other domain to your administrative group, and it would be stored inside of this foreign security principles. The managed service accounts container holds accounts that are used to run service or applications that are run on servers. Now, since managed service accounts, or called MSAs by Microsoft, are supposed to be used for services and not by end users, you will not create passwords for these accounts, but they are instead handled automatically. The problem of expiring service account passwords and security can be a huge headache for administrators, and this is what MSAs hope to solve. If you're new to system administration and that didn't make any sense to you, Basically, there's user accounts that are created within Active Directory that are only used to complete services. Like it might be a virus scan or, or installing updates or you know a program that needs to reach out and do a certain script. And a lot of times we would create these regular user accounts that would be the same as any other user account across the domain. But you would have to make sure you maintain the password and your applications would have to know what the passwords were. So if you change the password in Active Directory, then you'd have to go back to your application and update the password there. MSAs are designed to make it much less complicated where you just create the account and you don't ever have to deal with passwords or expiring accounts or anything silly like that. Now to create an MSA, you need to use the PowerShell command line. There is no interface to do this at this time, although Microsoft may later add this functionality. Inside of the users container, if we pop this open, you're gonna find the administrator and guest user accounts as well as several default security groups which are used by your domain. So we can see here's the guest, which is disabled, the default account, which is disabled. And then we have the administrator account. And then we have all these security groups that are used by your domain. The built-in domain contains security groups that are required for your domain to operate. So if we pop in here, we can see there's the administrator group, uh, guests, Hyper-V administrators, replicator. Uh, a big one is the remote desktop users group. I see that used quite a bit. And the thing to keep in mind is that you can't delete these. So if you right-click and choose all tasks, you cannot delete these groups, okay? Now that we've talked about containers, let's talk about organizational units. Now by default, we have this domain controllers organizational unit, and obviously this is where our computer would be stored, ITFDC01. And the reason why it's an organizational unit is because by default, there is a group policy object that is created and applied to this OU. Now group policy is in the next section, but we can't really get away with teaching Active Directory without talking about group policy sum. 
Organizational units commonly referred to as OUs are used to organize and separate objects within Active Directory. The objects could be anything the Active Directory could store. So it could be a user account, computer, printer, or a file share. If your company had a marketing team, you might create a new organizational unit and call it marketing and store all your marketing users and computers inside of this OU. So just like it sounds, the purpose of OUs are to help you organize your domain with an Active Directory. But it's much more important than just having a tidy Active Directory or an organized Active Directory. A lot of times, system administrators will assign specific permissions to certain OUs. For example, all the users inside of the marketing OU may have a special desktop background and special permissions to a file share that others may not have. This is why it's very important that you insert Active Directory objects into the correct OU, as picking the wrong OU could lead to some users having security privileges they're not supposed to have. Like I said, this not only applies to user accounts, but every object that is stored within Active Directory. Now, to create an organizational unit, we need to right click in the desired location. Now, in my case, I'm just gonna click at the root here, itflea.com. We're gonna right click and we're gonna choose new. Next, we're gonna pick organizational unit. So we're over here on the right, it's about halfway down, a little over halfway down. Select organizational unit, and then we have a new wizard that appears. It's just a little one page wizard. So what you need to do is type in the OU that you want. And I'm just gonna type in test OU, since this is just a test and it's just for demonstration purposes. Now notice this little button here, it says protect container from accidental deletion. You almost always wanna leave this checked, unless you plan on deleting it very soon. But we're going to delete this OU very soon, but I still want you to leave this checked because if it is checked, there's additional steps you have to take to delete the OU. So now all we need to do is click OK. We can see by default we've navigated to the test OU and we can see it's listed under here. So if I go back to the domain, we can see we have a new organizational unit called test OU. So we can right click on the OU and we can see we can cut the OU. If we wanted to move it, we can delete it, rename or refresh the OU. We can also make another OU inside of this OU. So if we right click on the OU and choose new, and again, choose organizational unit, we can call this another OU and just click okay. And so now we have an OU within an OU. We can keep going down and down and down as deep as we needed to go to keep our domain organized. So right clicking on this OU again, if we choose, if we right click on it, first thing to keep in mind is that we have to left click on the OU and then right click and we'll have this action menu right here. If we're under another OU, say at the top of the domain and we right click on the OU, we will not get those same options. So we can't export a list, for example. So if I click over here on the OU and I right click and choose export list, this will create a list of, or a text document that will list all the objects within this OU. Now it's not recursive, so it wouldn't list objects inside of the another OU. It would just list at the top level here, everything that's inside. So if I do this really fast, just to demonstrate, go to export list and we'll save it as test OU, say yes. And now we'll go to the desktop and I will pop it open. We can see here that we have another OU. And if there were other objects residing inside of this OU, it would be listed. Just like at the root domain, we can right click and we can delegate control, but nine times out of 10, all you're gonna be doing with OUs is deleting or creating new OUs. Now to delete an OU, we simply right click and choose delete. It's gonna say, are you sure you want to delete it? And we're gonna say yes. Now we're gonna see this pop-up that says you do not have sufficient privileges to delete test OU, or the object is protected from accidental deletion. And if you remember when we created this OU, we checked that checkbox that said protect from accidental deletion. So we need to learn how to turn this off. And the way you do that is by clicking OK. Up here at the top, we select View, and then Advanced Features. So down here, it's about halfway, a little over halfway down, we click Advanced Features. And we're gonna notice right away that a ton of options were added. So it can be a little bit confusing. Don't worry, everything that you were looking at before is still there, there's just new options available. So we can see that Test OU is still here. If we expand this out, we can see another OU. So we know we're in the right spot. So we're gonna right click and choose properties. And we'll go to object, the object tab at the top. And we'll uncheck the protect object from accidental deletion checkbox and we'll hit okay. And we'll do the same thing on another OU, okay? So we're trying to delete both of these, hit okay. And then we'll go back to view and we'll turn off advanced features. So you could leave it on if you'd like. I just prefer to turn it back off as it, you know, I don't see things that I don't need to see. So if we just right click on test OU, we can say delete and say yes. 
And then we're going to get this pop-up that says object test OU contains other objects. Are you sure you want to delete object test OU and all of the objects it contains? We're going to say yes. And now we can see that we have successfully deleted it. So now you understand what an organizational unit is. You understand what a container is. I told you a little bit about the default containers and OUs that come with Active Directory when you first set up your domain controller. You understand how to build new organizational units and how to remove the protection from accidental deletion and how to delete an OU. So that's pretty much all you need to know about organizational units. Great job getting through this lesson and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.